thank you very much for the, the invitation and the, your department, and your institution, and India, of course. It is an honor uh, for me to to talk to you, to you and uh, the people that uh, is seeing this presentation. I will try to speak a little bit slow uh, for you to be able to to understand my English. And uh, so uh, this project, uh, as uh, was mentioned, we have in our department, in our group, it's about 35 people working. We have uh, several phototherapy techniques, but we had also since the beginning of the group 30 years ago. We work with uh, optical glass. It's a glass we, we develop here. And um, the idea to, to study artificial lighting because uh, it was some kind of uh, uh, observation in the lab uh, 10 years ago that the glass would be useful for, for, the, for generate some uh, emission spectrum which is not uh, observed in crystals or other glass. And then we start to invest in this area for about 10 years. There are some publications and uh, this is what I'm going to talk about. Of course, uh, artificial illumination is a big subject. It's a hot spot from the technological point of view. We still don't have uh, 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 an ideal white light for uh, in indoor illumination. Uh, and, and this artificial light illumination is very important for our health. And the, 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 of course we are, we are used to, to have so, uh, solar uh, light uh, from million years, the human beings and the animals, of course. And also when you, you produce uh, uh, artificial light, uh, it's complicated and it's still uh, it's not possible to simulate or to, to reproduce uh, the illumination that you can get from the sun. Uh, this is uh, the, the subject I'm going to try to talk about from the point of view of materials, uh, phosphor materials for this development, but also there are uh, challenges in terms of how you, you characterize one uh, white light uh, that's the, the name. Um, the, the, the CAA has been changed for several times, but still uh, is not able to, to contemplate how you, you produce a real color uh, from a, a, a light source. So as it was mentioned, I am from the Department of Physics, State University of Maringá. And the title is Brazil. Uh, my university has 50 years old now, it's a young university. And uh, the title is Artificial Light and Human uh, Wellbeing, Challenges for the Foster Materials uh, Development. For those which uh, doesn't know uh, where we are, it's a map of Brazil in the, in the left side. And then uh, Paraná province, it's uh, the right side. And uh, this is the position where uh, Maringa stay. The city is young, it's 70, 71 years, 70 years now. And uh, the population is about 400,000 people. The university is really a medium sized university. We have about 22,000 undergraduate students, 62 courses. So in, uh, it's a uh, um, much core, all, all areas basically we have in the university about 4,000 to 5,000 graduate students, 27 PhD programs. We have a hospital, uh, three experimental farms. The agricultural uh, science and the teaching is very strong at the university. Our region is, uh, is very strong in agriculture, and we have a few experimental farms and two big rivers nearby. and uh, and the cathedral you see here in the map, it's uh, some, I would say, different uh, architecture. It was built in, in honor to the Sputnik, when his Sputnik was to the space in the, in the 50s. So it's a very nice, and uh, the cathedral, it's a, a place for where tourist people go. Okay, let's start to work. 
first thing, daylight, I, I use here uh, fluorescent as a fluorescent lamp as an example. But of course, fluorescent lamp is in many countries already uh, almost uh, out of the market. Uh, the LED system is, has been dominating and uh, it's complicated to go into the back. And then what is necessary to do is to improve the spectral uh, quality of the, 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 the white light. Uh, for that example here, we, we have, when you have a sunshine, you have the, bla the, the blackboard uh, variation temperature here, just to see the continuous effect that you can have. And then uh, we, are our, we are a human being, we have uh, uh, a million of years uh, adapted to the sun, sunlight uh, spectrum. And even uh, with sunlight spectrum changes throughout the day. You have more blue in the morning and then less blue in the afternoon. And this is part of our uh, circadian rhythms uh, for working and then sleep. Uh, this is very important for our health and everything. So uh, when you use artificial light, uh, uh, some people say this, it is one of the most uh, important technological development was the artificial light. Because with that, uh, work has been done during the night and the society was changed very much. So this uh, has big impact on us. Even now, uh, there is impact on screens like the computer screen, TV screen, uh, all this uh, uh, kind of illumination are depending on the, the, the source you have to generate the, the light. So, artificial light influence our well-being and there are uh, many, even uh, international conferences discussing the effect of artificial light in our, uh, in our, uh, in our health. Uh, if you look at here, the fluorescent lamp, this is the old kind of fluorescent lamp. And you see the spectrum uh, is not, uh, of course, uh, similar to the sun, sun spectrum. What is, uh, is known uh, already uh, that we have uh, uh, these ganglion cells in our eye, which is a uh, pigment sensitive to blue light and responsible for, it's not responsible basically for, it has a, a low contribution to the formation of imaging. So the blue light uh, uh, excites our eyes through these cells, and then it uh, can make you stay awake, or uh, uh, it's interfere in the, in, in the way you sleep and you, uh, and you, you wake up. So uh, illumination, of course, the cell phones today, they already have the, the mechanism that you can reduce the, the blue light. The recommendation is even uh, to avoid to use a, a cell phone uh, with this kind of illumination before you go to bed uh, because it will influence uh, your, your, your sleep. So uh, the blue light uh, is responsible for regulation of the human circadian uh, rhythms act as a blue sky receptor that is act as a high color temperature receptor. So it means uh, circadian lights, like having blue light source with tunability of color temperature would be uh, beneficial to human health, well-being and productivity. In this paper in science, uh, in 2005, it was already mentioned about the, the smart white light, it means the ideal uh, artificial light we would have indoor or in our, especially where we work in our workplace, if you are exposed to for all the time, that you would have a light source that could be tunable and you change the spectrum throughout the day as uh, it has happened with the sunshine uh, outside. And uh, this is, uh, I would say, the one, one important aspect here. And the second aspect that it's important for the development of a new uh, white light source is that the people from health area, it's, uh, it's a conference, it's 2007, but there are uh, many other uh, publications recently 
where uh, when you, you 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 change your circadian rhythms, like for example the the people that work in airplanes, that they change the day to the night and uh, this kind of uh, uh, workplace, it influences. Uh, it can do some disease when you change your circadian uh, way of uh, living, like uh, cancer, diabetes, the obesity, depression, all this kind of effect. And this uh, has to be, if uh, we have hypothalamus here uh, representing, the production of melatonin, which uh, uh, it depends on the, the if you have a, a dark condition or not, you, you can uh, for the production of melatonin, which is very important for our uh, physiology. Of course, there is no, it's not my intention to discuss this kind of uh, uh, situation. We just need to justify why we need to study. We need to develop new uh, white light sources. That's the, the I think the goal uh, for us, especially as a physicist or uh, uh, electrical engineering and, uh, or uh, uh, chemical engineering, chemistry people. That's our job to try to develop this kind of uh, device. Well, uh, of course, the history, uh, I know this, uh, this presentation should give some background. Uh, you, for the history of uh, artificial illumination, it's, as I said before, it dates for the last 150 years. And uh, since the beginning of uh, the last century, uh, you see, First, the resume of this in the, the 18th, 19th century, well, the beginning of the, the carbon arc lamp and uh, the end incandescent lamp by Thomas Edison, which and followed by the fluorescent lamps. Fluorescent lamps was uh, very interesting because it replaced basically the incandescent lamp. Uh, some, it, for example, Brazil, we had before uh, production of uh, incandescent lamp, it doesn't have any more. And then the fluorescent lamp took place uh, from the 50s. And after that, uh, let, uh, I remember 10 years, 15 years ago, I, 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 when we started this area, I said in a seminar that I would predict that in 10 years, the fluorescent lamp would be out of the market. I think it is the reality now. Uh, there is no more place at the moment for fluorescent lamp, and LED is is, is getting the all the commercial uh, uh, part of the the, the 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 light source. But uh, this uh, the, this graphic is you can find in the Edison Tech Center. It's, you can have a, a good history of uh, all the the, the, the light source, if you are interested, uh, up to the, the LED, OLED, it's our organic LED, it's uh, the, the last ones. Well, um, of course, the incandescent lamps, uh, one of the, the justification, one of the justification to, 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 to move from, from incandescent lamp, of course, it's the, the efficiency which is the most uh, part of the spectrum is emitting the infrared that by you produce heat and the visible you have uh, you have a, a low percentage of the the radiation the visible and but of course it's a it's a it's it's a, a, a spectrum with uh, a good for in terms of uh, health of other people and that here, for a comparison, I have a, a, spe a solar spectrum, uh, of course, not uh, pointing the optical fiber to the, the straight to the sun, but to the, the sky in two different hours of the day. But you see the solar, the, the main point here is the, the solar spectrum is wide. And, and sometimes people say that some uh, light source, when you have peaks in, in some wavelengths, it's good for the brightness, and then you can improve the the, the illumination quality. But it's it sometimes is not good for the health. For example, if you have an intense peak in the red, like you you can see your blood in your finger. Why you can see? Because your skin is transparent to the, the red. So if you have uh, some illumination with uh, uh, a high dose of this kind of wavelength, you may excite your blood 
with this kind of wavelength. So uh, the broad spectrum, it seems to be uh, better for uh, for health quality, even for the eyes. Né? Uh, the broad spectrum is always uh, is better. Uh, it's a challenge to, to, to for the development. Well, uh, uh, another comparison here, uh, if you don't know, uh, the, the left side of, uh, up, you see a two fluorescent lamp. The old one I showed before, and the color, the one called three phosphor, which is three elements that they need basically three peaks. If you see the, these three elements, you see in 620 nanometer, you have a very big peak here. If you calculate the area, this the intensity in this region is about five times compared to the the, the halo one, uh, the broader one. So you are five times more dose in this wavelength. So this is sometimes a problem. We have some experience in our hospital here, which people complain when this kind of illumination was uh, uh, introduced. Now it is moved, and also this three phosphor is also going out to the market too. And of course, uh, you have uh, LEDs plus YAG, is a second spectrum here. Uh, you can see and uh, LEDs, you have a very big peak in the blue and also a uh, fluorescent uh, in the yellow and also another characteristic of the LEDs. It's a uh, luck of a red part of the emission. This is uh, the most, it's quite complicated to develop a material to emit in the red. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a challenge for the, uh, to that. Everybody trying to do that because if you have a better red emission, you can get a good spec. But one limitation of the this commercial LEDs is that big peak in the blue, which is quite. If you look at the solar spec in the back and the left side back, down, you see the solar spec doesn't have this peak in 450 nanometer. If you look at here, you have the peak in the in the sunshine is about five, 500 nanometer, but it's wide and it's complement with the, the, the other colors. So it's a not, uh, it's a poor spectrum if you, if you say, uh, compare with the solar spectrum from LED plus, uh, plus a phosphor like YAG. And I, and I showed here for you as a, a candle to compare. It's a very safe uh, spectrum in terms of uh, uh, for us. And also, it's romantic. You say I, I usually I finish the seminar with that, but uh, I, I just put here for comparison uh, how you have illumination for a candle. Well, uh, but of course, if you are uh, looking at the development, if you want to work in developing white lights, so you need to to develop device that try to reproduce the solar spectrum. This is the the main point. So uh, you have uh, regulations and uh, some countries that have their own regulation like France, uh, US, Japan, I don't know how it is in India. In Brazil, unfortunately, we don't have a uh, regulation saying that the light source we buy uh, should have a spectral distribution. You, uh, we just have a, a regulation in terms of uh, saving energy uh, the cost and the uh, basic is that. Of course, we since we 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 use the same uh, illumination that worldwide, we in some way we are we have some protection, but we have no regulation uh, with uh, a light source that can be that you can buy in the market. And of course, the, what kind of parameter it is important, which is sometimes, for example, for LEDs with phosphor and the 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 the, the, the regulation and the, the way you calculate the parameters too is not uh, uh, is not uh, uh, good because it's uh, especially for LEDs because you have uh, peaks in the spectrum which is is very complicated when you calculate color render index for example how you you have a light source that could provide you a color for an object that is is reality of that object and Color temperature, of course, depends when you go to the, the, to the market, you buy some light source. The color temperature is one of the parameters that you, you people say white light or warm and some kind of thing. They are talking about the uh, uh, 
a color temperature or a black body radiation comparison. And of course, a parameter which is very important for the development, quantum yields, how efficient is your light to convert electrical energy to, to, to light and the quantum efficiency of the material. Uh, durability, of course, it's economic importance. Color stability, you don't want, you want to have a, a illumination if the color changing during the time, it's your eye will not uh, uh, like it. A low suppression of luminescence with temperature because all these devices, although LEDs have less uh, high temperature, but you still have some heating. So you, you cannot have also uh, reducing the emission with temperature and low environmental impact as as according to the to the fluorescent lamp because fluorescent lamp is a very big problem with the environment with the contamination and then that's why it's one of the reasons that uh, uh, is being uh, uh, is almost out of the market and the finally, of course, it's also all the time it's important low cost because you can have it uh, for uh, all the population independent of uh, the, how they have economic condition to, to have this device for their uh, use. Okay, uh, one of the parameter color rendering index, uh, of course, this, this image is from this site. Uh, when you have some uh, different colors, uh, the, the channel, the ability of a light source to reproduce the color of an object. This is a very important subject. I didn't put any, any slide here, but you, you can imagine the dentistry area is very important when they have to substitute some teeth and put artificial teeth, artificial teeth, and it's a very big issue because people to feel uh, good and uh, artificial teeth sometimes depending on the illumination if you go for example in a in a place with uv light uv light you see people that seems that uh, have an artificial teeth instead of a natural teeth so the reproduction of uh, a color uh, is a, a what is called a uh, color render index is an important parameter that is uh, used for characterizing as some uh, light source. Uh, I'm not going to, to go through this kind of uh, legislation and uh, rules like CAA uh, because it's a subject for a, a seminar itself. But uh, yeah, for those of which are interested, it's a good beginning, I think, is just these two, two papers. Uh, this one is uh, 2000, from 2011. It's a group from from England, the quality of a light source. It's had a big, uh, a very nice discussion about C uh, the color temperature, uh, CRI index, uh, chromatograph, chroma, chroma, chromatic distribution of the light source. And also this review, which is from 2009, from this, uh, from Davis and Ono, it's an uh, approach to color and its measurement. Because you see, this is still a subject that need improvement, and uh, there are discussion, open discussion, uh, how to improve the way to determine uh, uh, color reproduction from a light source. It's still an open subject, so it is an area of research too. But we just use it, uh, just for you to to have an idea how we we giving a uh, having a sample, we pre we measure the initial. And then how we characterize it, and this is what, if you want to write a paper, you should have this information in your paper regarding your material to see if your material is candidate or not uh, for uh, white light. Um, I, I insist again, because the idea since the beginning to use glass is because of the wider uh, emission bands compared to crystals, what is in the market for uh, nowadays uh, using lead and phosphor? This is uh, the glass would get give you a wider uh, uh, emission spectrum. It's a justi uh, main justification for for us to invest in this kind of project. Uh, but well, uh, you have here again a human eye how light pass through. 
since the, the first uh, layer uh, with ganglion cells in the, in the surface of the eye, which I said is very uh, sensitive to the blue, blue color. Of course, the blue light is uh, more energetic, and now sometimes the excess of blue uh, light can induce uh, uh, changing circadian rhythm, but also can induce uh, some disease in, in your eyes, like uh, which is should be avoided. And also the, the 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 region of roads and cones cells where the color are defined. So the CAA. Uh, I'm going to show the chromatic later on, but this is a function spectrum with X, uh, Y, and, and Z. Uh, this integration is about the intention, uh, the, 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 uh, about the, the, the intensity, which it, uh, gives sometimes uh, gives some kind of a, uh, spectral distribution of the, our eye response to a white light. So this is a function that is used when we. Uh, uh, determine the chromat uh, chromat chromatic uh, distribution of a light source. Uh, with that, in 1931, it's a CAA International, uh, you, 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 you construct the CAA chromatic diagram like this, and then uh, you have a, a white color right in the middle. Uh, later on, I'll say when X is 0, 30, 0 33 and uh, why 033 you are more or less uh, in the in the region where do we say the idea white light and also we have this macadam macadam ellipses that uh, it's discussed in that paper i showed you because you have a non-linear perception of the, the variables x and y and then uh, this the chroma this chromatographic system is important when you analyze your uh, light source. Uh, in 1976, this was, there was some change to, to, uh, for this parameter to the, 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 the chromatograph diagram to improve a little bit because uh, there was some uh, problem and the dislocation was uh, basically related with the dislocation uh, regarding the, the black body uh, temperature uh, uh, curve like here, if you see here, uh, you have a black body temperature, and then when you calculate the difference on a, a sort like the black body, and then you, you get this U and V, which calls DUV uh, parameter, it, it provides you more information, the quality of uh, the, the light you develop. Because sometimes the white light, the white color for our eyes, is just a mixing of colors. So the quality of a good distribution of color in all wavelengths that should give uh, should be given for this kind of calculation. When you have the spectra, you calculate the difference between uh, this possible uh, Planckian curve, and the difference should be as minimal as possible. And in this, uh, as I said before, the the, the, the ellipses is the regions where uh, our eye cannot uh, dis differentiate between and colors and so you uh, you group it into in three regions to try to to provide a, a good characterization of the, the artificial light you have well the color rendering uh, i don't have for the lead here but it's not so good too but you have some different kind of source you have this information the literature into uh, the site here is uh, you can get that well Let's start so material development. If you want to obtain a, a light, a white light combined, you have two ways to do that. You can get two LEDs, for example, here in the left, one blue and one yellow LED. We have you have one blue. The mixing can give you some white, but it's not really a white light, as you say in terms of sunlight spectrum. The or you can combine three LEDs also, but this try is also uh, is, doesn't work very well because the LED has stability, especially for the red LEDs. They are not so stable with temperature, so you don't have a stable. Uh, so the white the white white light only from LEDs, uh, it's not uh, uh, used for for artificial light for indoor light for uh, for using our environment in, where we work. 
And the, the way uh, in the leg you, you find it marked is like this. You have a lead. Sometimes you have more than one lead here. And over the lead, you want to foster material. You can, when you buy the mark, you see there is a yellow crystal over the, oops, sorry, and over the, the, the lead. You, have, you can get low cost, use just one foster or high efficiency. This is the, the most simple one. For example, you can use the blue LED, excite the phosphor, which emits, and then you combine the emission from the blue LED and pass through the, the, the crystal, because the crystal is here, and the blue LED you pass through the crystal, and then you have part of the blue LED uh, in the, going to the, the environment, and then they, they emit the light from the phosphor, and then you combine, then you have a spectrum. This is the, the way the, the commercial uh, LEDs uh, you have in the market. You can also combine it more than one LEDs and also, and also uh, more than one uh, phosphor element. Phosphor element can be crystals or glass, as I said, uh, or ceramics uh, before. The first one was YAG uh, with Serial 3 Plus. Uh, you see the YAG crystal here with Serial, very nice one. And then when you, you, you you put it in the illuminate with a, a blue light, and then you can get uh, uh, this spec. But unfortunately, this is the first one. You see, it's uh, 20, 25 years ago, uh, the first uh, commercial LED was developed. So you have here the beginning of the AI with uh, cerium and, and also some other crystals, like it is it's shown here in the, in the right side. And also, this was the beginning of the, it's also uh, measuring from the one of the guys that uh, published this kind of uh, work, he mentioned the, the history of this Sobira. Uh, uh, here is one of the first, when you get the YAG with a cerium, a YAG aluminum cerium, but also it was introducing some gadolinium with zero gadolinium, 0.5, 0 0.75. So you see, and the spectrum uh, on the right side uh, down, you see with zero hydrogen, it's the spectrum, the blue one, you have a big peak in the 470, 480 nanometer, and then a minimum in terms of, in terms of 500 nanometer, and then a broad emission from the phosphor. So the peak is from the left, and the, the white peak is from the, the cerium combined with uh, gadolinium. So you see, it doesn't have any, any similarity with the sun, sun, sunshine emission. That's why it's, uh, it's still a challenge to get a, a, a good illumination and device. Uh, you see here, when they change the concentration of gadolinium, you see the, the, in the chromatographic diagram how you, you try to get the position 033 033, which is considered the white, uh, white ideal white light point, is, is the coordinate is written here uh, for you. Uh, some uh, very short, very fast uh, history about the, 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 the LEDs for uh, LED with phosphor uh, white light device. Of course, it's not everything. There are much more work in the literature. It's a, it's a very active area. Yeah, I, I just select some of them. Uh, it, this work in 2005. Uh, you see there's a quantum dot uh, polyurethane system with, uh, uh, it was, the, the publication was 2005. I'm not going to discuss the day of the paper. And also uh, in 2010, this uh, system is uh, quantum dot also. It's a nice, uh, uh, red eye of this uh, rain, rain batch. And also uh, here you have a quantum dot from Puritan uh, down. And also carbon matrix, uh, this, this work in 2012. And also uh, here, uh, uh, this crystal strontium silic uh, silicon serum 3 plus. It's a uh, hybrid with uh, carbon selenite. It's, uh, all this work trying to get better emission for the white light. And the, this one, the copper one. So this is um, I, I, the work I select during this period just to, to, for you to, to follow. Um, here um, we have uh, 
uh, our organometallic system, which was published in 2013, it's a nature uh, communication paper. And you see all the time trying, but you see we have peaks, uh, localized peaks from the, the spectrum, which is, um, uh, it's, it's also uh, not similar to the sun uh, emission. You know, well, let's justify our, our, the work we do here in our group. So uh, oxide materials, uh, the glass we work is uh, first, as I said before, we want to get broad spectrum, efficient and broad spectrum uh, to, to be advantage compared with crystals to get a better spectrum for the emission. This is the main goal. Materials and ions for white light. So there's oxide materials like chemically stable, uh, high melting point, relative facility to introduce phosphor ions. It's really stable. For example, if you get some glasses, the glass will work, and the temperature of uh, preparation is 1600 Celsius. So this glass is really adequate for a very hostile environment. So it will not change uh, under the excitation you, you induce in a white light system. In fact, this, the laser, the work, the glass we, we develop uh, is even used for high power laser uh, as a activity. So uh, it's a very stable glass. So, uh, and some phosphor that we use for samarium, praseodymium, terbium, but europium is the most important. Uh, uh, you can get your up into a tree, a cereal, and, and cereal is the most important. Of course, there will there is some challenge too. Why the glass will work? The the history of this glass it was developed in the beginning of last century, and then it's uh, basically uh, the composition is basically of aluminium and calcium, a, a little bit of silica. It's not just a aluminate, it's aluminum silicate, but with very low concentration of silicon. With that, the temperature of fusion is 1600 Celsius. Transition temperature, glass transition temperature, 850, it means the highest, uh, one of the highest glass temperature, glass transition temperature you have in glass. So this is because this glass is very, uh, very important. And also, uh, we prepare it under vacuum atmosphere, and inside the, 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 the furnace, everything is from graphite. The graphite also happen, uh, help to control the oxidation state of some ions. And this is uh, important to play uh, when you want uh, some absorption or emission uh, for uh, interest in terms of white light. And then when we prepare this under vacuum atmosphere, we remove the OH atmosphere which means the glass is transparent up to five micrometers in the infrared. It's because it has low silica concentration. You know, when you have a silicon, a glass with silica, uh, the cutoff is in less than four micrometer, sometimes 3.5. And another characteristic of this glass, it was explored by Shelby in, in 1985, uh, not under vacuum condition, if I'm not wrong. Uh, he studied the, the, the phase di uh, the the diagram uh, of different concentration, and then uh, to see some concentration doesn't uh, form glass, and this concentration here uh, we use it's almost out of the phase diagram. It means uh, we took some time to 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 to, to dominate the the, the glass pro preparing process, but uh, happy. We are happy because we get really uh, nice glass with very uh, high optical quality, which you really can be used for optical uh, devices, for many kinds of lasers, uh, any other uh, device. And also in this composition, we changes and increase the, the silicon concentration, like here, from 7 to 65, and then maintain the, the fusion under vacuum, uh, melting under vacuum atmosphere, to, to, to play with the, the, the emission of the glass. And there are some photos of some sample here. You see, depending on the, the doping you, you use, you have different color. I say to my student, at least it can be a Jew. <laughs> it's a nice Jew. It's the, the black, almost black one is titanium. It's a titanium tree, which gives this color. It's difficult to get in glass. Uh, 
and then the this uh, RNG is from Europium, and then some of rare years also. Here. Uh, 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 important aspect of the glass. You can compare here, for example, cut off in the infrared. Uh, when you compare this glass, you should compare with silicates and phosphates because fluorides and chalcogenides, they are really uh, with some properties, they really have some good properties for optical, uh, optical, prop, optical applications. But they are glass that is not so um, adequate for a hostile, hostile environment because they you let's compare here so cut off in the infrared we, we have 5.5 5.5 silicates 4 and uh, phosphate 4.5 fluorides 8 and chocolate 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 at 15 micrometers and uh, the cut off of the where, where the glass uh, stopped to transmit and phono energy which is very important for luminescence and when you have it High form of energy, you have low, uh, usually you have low luminescence. So you have a glass with lower uh, form of energy. So our glass, uh, low silica, is uh, 800, around 800 centimeters minus one. And silicates 1,000, and phosphate 1,000. Of course, the fluorides and chapogenides is, is very lower, is lower than uh, the other uh, oxide glass. Thermal conductivity, you can see here, is from 14 to 15, is the highest from between the, the, the other glass. It means the glass uh, has more facility to release heat, which is important for certain application. And the hardness also, you can compare, it's very uh, much higher than compared to the other glass, which means the glass has thermomechanical property, which is adequate for hostile environment. Well, another photos here with uh, this is titanium and these are cerium samples. Okay, a some publication uh, from our groups in this, uh, 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 we have done, uh, the first one, sorry, it is in yellow color here. And this publication is in 2009, which was the first work if, uh, to us, some kind of observation in the lab. We were wait, looking at uh, a different sinks are a sample with a uh, cereal. We were trying just to, to study the gap of the glass because of titanium sample we had, and we observed the, the white light. And uh, from there, from this paper, we, we developed other uh, papers. And this is what I'm going to show part of the work here. And recent paper, it's uh, we have one this year and last year to, to other papers. Okay. Um, I think I have to go faster. Uh, the advantages, uh, advantages for, uh, for example, when you use serial three plus, you have uh, allowed the transition for five to five B, broad emission band in the yellow, high emission quantum efficiency, and short emission lifetime. It's very important for force of material, for, uh, around 50 nanoseconds. It can be excited by U uh, blue and UV uh, LED. This advantage it excites it because you all the time you have some uh, serial four plus in your sample. Uh, material emits uh, few materials emit in yellow. It depend on the, the the material where you are going to put the ion, and only material with grenade structure and trace present yellow emission. That's what I'm going to show you. And low red emission. This is for all glasses. And for europium, the same way you have a broad emission. Uh, it's a partially allowed uh, electronic transition. Presence of Europe 3 and 2, it's sometimes it is uh, useful. And also, uh, few materials can have Europe, Europe 2. It, it depends on the condition you melt the, the material. That's why we, 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 we got in, your, in, your, in our sample. The first paper was this one uh, for the observation in the lab. First, we illuminate the sample with a lab. Uh, laser, a uh, blue laser, and then we observe this yellow emission, and this is what the, as we, we said, the step uh, forward toward white, white light, combining, combining the glass phosphor and the uh, a diode laser, a diode uh, LED in the blue. We develop the sample with 2% of cerium. Um, you see here, and explanation of the, the conduction band and the, the energy, the, the valence band and the lab of the serial and how you get, you have the absorption band, so you have absorption 
up to 400 nanometers, so you can use lead here in 350 to excite the, the serum in your sample, and then you get the, the emission, which I am going to show you. Uh, one important aspect of this work was the condition under, uh, the, the melting under vacuum condition and the graphite system uh, was essential to promote uh, serum 3 plus, to, uh, 4 plus to 3 plus to get the emission in the yellow. This was what we explored. Of course, we did all the calculation uh, to see, first of all, the, in the, the app uh, in the figure, you can see the human eye answer, the CAA 1931, and then the, the calculation for the serum YAG, the crystal, the serum lithium strontium uh, crystal, and the serum low silica. Of course, you have all these uh, materials, see, uh, YAG, strontium, and our glass doesn't have emission in the, in the blue. Only our glass still have some, something uh, around uh, 480. But uh, that's why you need to complete the spectrum with uh, a lab. Then you put a lab, you, uh, the last figure here in back, in the left side, you see different LED power. Combine a lab, then you try to construct the, the, the white light uh, uh, in the visible. And then we calculate in the chromatogram and the diagram we, we, our white light, uh, which was quite close to the, the ideal white light, if you see it in, in the chromatomatic diagram. And also in the back side, I have another figure here. Uh, it's better to see. Uh, we calculate the convoluted with the integration of the of the, the, the answer of, uh, of the human eye, uh, the, 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 the curve C uh, of lambda. And you can see here the fluorescent lamp doesn't match at all and other uh, source that is specified here. And you see that our glass, it's uh, this, this pink uh, cube, almost match with the, the, the eye response uh, in this region of around uh, 408 nanometer from uh, the eye. Another uh, effect that we, we observe, the reabsorption, uh, when you excite the sample in different position, you see you have shifted the, from the yellow to the blue. Just change the position of your emission because you have tuning from first you excite 317, you have a 410 emission, and then excite the uh, serum again, and then you have an emission 450, which is in the yellow. This is discussed in this paper here. Why our glass emits in the yellow? There is not, we didn't find any other glass that we see that emit in the yellow. Because we see our explanation is because it has a, uh, some kind of uh, garnet structure, um, like the crystals of Yagi, and then um, this uh, probably is the reason why we have uh, the yellow emission. And also we have a Hamann spectroscopy to show you that. If you see here the blue pure from the hourglass, the, the Raman, the, the phonon energy is a little bit smaller than the silicon, and then and the crystals they have uh, this kind of distribution. But just to explain the structure of the glass. Sorry. Then what we did, we prepared this, got the glass, and we start to increase the silicon and maintaining the concentration of European, uh, in this case for European doping. What happened was that the, depending on the concentration, for example, the low silica is the, the this orange uh, sample, and then we increase the silica concentration, go to the, the blue emission, and, and then uh, you also have a change in the ratio between European 2 and European 3 in the sample. We did magnetic resonance. We, we, you can see here in the, the right side the, the quantity of uh, of uh, a I have a, a film here that you can see the color difference better when just change the concentration of the silicon, showing that our glass with low silica is nice for uh, getting emission in the yellow and close to red emission. You can see here the left side you have a low silica with seven percent silica. It's orange emission. And the right side, you have 65% uh, silicon. Oh, the same condition of melting just change the silicon concentration. You have basically a white light, but not, in fact, it's a blue emission 
uh, of this, uh, I think this, the, the, sorry for the, there is some, there is some voice here in Portuguese, so, but you can see the difference between the, the, the lines. Now, after that, we start, uh, we did serial sample, European sample, and now serial and open combined. The idea, try, trying to get the broader uh, spec as possible. So we start with uh, concentration of, uh, change concentration of European serial. And the first one, we have this uh, here, 0.5% European, 2% serial, and a sample uh, with 2% serial plus 0.5% European. So you have the figure here and the, the emission on the right side from the three samples. So you see there is, uh, when you use uh, uh, Europe, uh, Syria, you have a uh, yellow emission, uh, uh, the orange emission. And uh, when you combine this to uh, in, the, in the, the third sample, you see what happened. You see how the, the color change. So the, the, the last one, uh, when you have mixing of the uh, and cereal, we can get a big spec, uh, wide spectrum from 450 nanometer go up to 650 nanometer in the, in through the, the red. So it's a really, uh, we, we didn't see any spectrum in the literature with a glass or crystal or any uh, kind of these materials that uh, provide uh, this so wide uh, uh, spectrum. We think this is a nice system. Of course, we calculate the the chromaticity of the sample, and uh, put a, you have to, to recite it with a lab and change the lab from 370 to 430 to evaluate the color temperature of the spectrum and to to, to approach the the spectrum of uh, the solar uh, solar spectrum. And here you, you, you can see the left side of the same thing. Um, here, uh, the chromaticity parameter, and I, I don't know how, much, how, how long time I have. It's... Yes, sir. Uh, you can continue, sir. Thank, okay, you. thank you. You can continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, so parameter, for example, you compare your glass uh, just cereal, cereal European, and cereal, and with uh, cereal Strauss with a crystal. You see the excitation using LEDs in similar wavelengths, so a little bit different here. And then you can see the DUV parameter. This parameter should be as, 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 as low as possible, close to zero. So it's quite similar. And temperature, color temperature. Color temperature, you, 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 for example, if you buy a LED in the market today, when I buy for my house, I it's not ideal LED, of course, but uh, I buy for 4,000 uh, Kelvin temperature. It's the LED I buy. I don't buy 6,500 because that one is not white light. It's blue light. It's quite, uh, sometimes you think it's uh, illuminated better, but it's just, uh, of, uh, uh, make your eyes feel so strong illumination that you you close your eyes. So uh, so our glass has this combination. European cereal has uh, the, the temperature of uh, color temperature close to the one we myself I buy in the market to put my house in, in, in the environment where where we work. At the university, uh, we have a old classroom. And then the, where people work, the, the illumination is 4,000 and Kelvin. Not like this, 5,350. 5, this is just for uh, uh, external uh, uh, illumination, like streets or something like that, but not for indoor illumination. And also the parameters like uh, the UV, because this uh, line is was a new definition that uh, we also obtain here. And then you can see here the, the left, uh, the right side, you have the Planckian curve for 5,200 Kelvin, and the, the, the answer for our glass, uh, it is a good, a good agreement. Well, we made some prototypes for with our glass. Uh, you can do it with powders uh, in powder form, or even uh, put the, the glass as the T is, because it is homogeneous, and then we 
try to explore. And here it's an example that when you can get nowadays in many places, the, the, the external illumination, it's also a problem not for us only, for the birds, for the animals, and for the pollution of the environments. Many cities in the world are worried about that because of the, 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 the amount of light we, we send to space. And if you look at here one street with blue, uh, blue basic blue illumination and the more orange illumination. If you look at here in the figure uh, right side down, you see the circadian sensitivity, uh, the dot line, and then you see the photo, photopic sensitivity is uh, it's quite uh, this it's, it's not matched, and also the blue rich light, so it goes to the circadian sensitivity. So it means this blue illumination is not um, is not nice for us uh, at all. And then after uh, that, uh, it's, this paper is for this year, 2021. What we combined, the, we, we had the titanium paper before, we, we published a physical review of the paper uh, for time, because we, in, only in our glass under vacuum atmosphere, we are able to, to, come, to obtain titanium triplets, usually in oxide glass. If you melt it in air atmosphere, you get titanium 4, glass is transparent. But uh, to get titanium 3, you, you need to change the condition of your melting. There are other glass, but a few of them, uh, but we, we were able to get uh, emission with very broad emission in the red. This is, I'm not going to show here, but it's in this paper, it is going to be I showed, I told you. And the idea was to combine the titanium with europium. It's a very complicated situation because you see, you can have titanium in titanium 3, titanium 4, and you have your opium 2 and aerotium 3. So uh, when you make the melt, it depends the condition of melting, it depends on the concentration you use. So we start, you, uh, we prepare the sample. You see here uh, four samples. One is 0.1 europium. Another one, the red, uh, the absorption coefficient is the, the, the up spectrum. Uh, and the 0.5 europium, it's uh, the two red ones. And then the blue ones is 0.21 europium and two titanium and 0.25 europium and five titanium. You have the spectrum in the UV visible and also in the infrared. The infrared was important in this spectrum just to understand what the oxidation state we had in, the, in our sample uh, from the abstraction spectrum. Here, we, we propose a, a energy level diagram to explain the emission for our glass. If you look at here, you have Europium 2, uh, Titanium 3, Titanium 4, uh, energy transfer process, and then Europium 3, because Europium 3 has emission in the red. So this, uh, what will happen in this spectrum uh, here in the, the, the right side, it's uh, if you pay attention, it goes from 400 nanometers up to 700 nanometers. It's a, it's a very nice peak. We still have a peak here. This peak comes from the left, but you see, even though it's not so disproportional compared to what you you have in the commercial LEDs, but you can get some uh, combination here because we change the wavelength of the LED in, in, in power. What means you can get uh, a, a configuration where the blue emission is uh, has lower intention and is, is a narrow uh, line, but lower intention than the in 500 nanometers. So it, it is really approach to the solar spectrum uh, this situation. Uh, uh, here is better to to look at. You see, you can see the, the graph again. And then uh, we calculate the, the blank curve, the, the chromatograph diagram, and then uh, change the, 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 the power of the lab. You see, we can go very close to the white light position, which is, as, as I said, 0.33 and 0.33 for X and Y. It's uh, this position in the Planckian curve. Uh, in the back, in the table, the first line, table one, uh, you see here the, because one aspect I didn't tell now, 
All these samples, we measure the quantum efficiency using thermal lens technique, thermal mirror technique. As I said in the beginning, we have in our lab. So we have a technique with, uh, uh, to, to study the fluorescence quantum efficiency because it is one important parameter, how much energy you are going to, to put out. You, you illuminate the, your sample with a LED. How much uh, for the, the light from the LED will be converting light to emit from the phosphor? So you can see here in this sample, we, we found point, uh, about 0.8% efficiency and 0.17% of the, the samples with uh, uh, as, as, uh, 0, 1 European 2 with titanium, the, doped, the co doped sample. And also here we have a CRI parameter. You can see here CRI, it's, it's accepted. The best one is, uh, is about 70. So you see our two samples, one is 77, another one is 64. And then the color, the CCT temperature is about 7,000. And the second one is 5,000. 5,000, it's okay, right? Because, of course, these parameters, they are not real. Uh, they don't reveal very well the, the quality of the spectrum because, as I said, the, this, the, the CAA uh, way to calculate the, 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 the spectrum of uh, lead and uh, phosphor is not uh, good because of you have localized bands from both. That's the, the, you still need to have a, a, a new way to find the, the this parameter for uh, to characterize our, our white light source. Uh, here, just to show you the CCT and the DUV parameter, uh, change the power of the LED. It's very nice because you can, when you change the power, it means you are changing the, the spectrum you have. This is uh, what you could say a uh, smart white light. You could have a device, an electronic system that control the power of the LED in your home, in your place that would change the color of your, the, the illumination of your LED during the day. You could have more blue in the morning and go to red in the, in the afternoon, and then you are going to be prepared for sleeping in the end of the day. <laughs> it, this is what, uh, one way to, to, to develop the system. You can buy it in market today, uh, lights that uh, you can control the color, but usually they are mixing different LEDs, uh, different phosphor, and then you have to switch between them. Here you can just control the power of the, the LED that is being used for excitation. Well, I'm going to, to conclude uh, uh, some re remarks. In fact, the low silica glass that we are working is the first glass doped with cerium present in yellow emission. White light or circadian light can be obtained from very rare doped like europium. Uh, uh, low silica glass under blue or UV excitation or both. Emission band broader than doped garden, it's a very important spec. It's a, uh, the emission band is broader than crystals. Uh, the, the glass has a disordered structure uh, formed by tetraedros and silicon octaedros. It's a, just a, a characterization, characterization of this, the glass. European and European cereal doped glass show the different spectral emission according to silicon content. And water free um, is a promising material for light uh, light generation. And the International Light Commission, it is, it's, a, it's not my statement, right? It's a, they are already uh, uh, investigated that there is a commission doing this kind of work, trying to get a better way to characterize a, a a light source because it's very, it has importance for commercial importance, the, the specification of color of an object. It's uh, so it's uh, maybe you have some news in the near future for, uh, on that. Uh, oxide material are still the most used in the uh, Why oxide? Because you see, all the, the, the system you buy in the market, it's uh, basically like crystals that uh, you buy or some. Uh, the oxides, it's because they are stable, they are durable. Uh, one of the, the, the main arguments for people to, to use a uh, white light device with lead and uh, phosphor is that because this can last for uh, much more than incandescent and fluorescent, lamp, much more. So it's uh, uh, saving energy and, and also uh, is more durable. 
So you, you can also contribute to the environment. Despite of several white light prototypes and several published work, we are very far from an ideal light source. Maybe our results in Titanium Europe is, could be a little bit uh, against this uh, statement. Um, but as I said to you, it's still not available commercially. It's in, um, it's in research level. And then uh, we don't know the viability of uh, economic viability, viability of this because you see you are uh, dealing with big uh, manufacturing that dominates the world and fabricating this kind of device. It's not so easy to exchange. Uh, I'd like to do a special thanks to Professor Luis, uh, Professor Sandro, Professor Bente, Professor Medina for sharing me, uh, with me some slides uh, that I used in this presentation. Our team is a little bit old photo. We cannot get together the last two years for include more students here in the list because uh, some of the People here already finished PhD, are working in some other universities. Some are, uh, uh, are became a staff in our department, but we, our group is some uh, more or less like that. 35 people, I uh, have myself, uh, Professor Bento, we are the pioneer of the, the, the group, and then Nelson Astrati, um, like, uh, Professor Medina here, Jurandir, and uh, this guy is uh, Vitor and now he's already uh, work as a, uh, a lecturer in our department and all the students. I thank to them for the, because this work were, could not be done if he, it was not uh, had involvement of many people. Even we have a collaboration in France with Professor Boulot, Professor Yannick, Professor Dominique from German now, and also, uh, as I said, Professor and Luis Antonio from São Carlos in, in many other places, in, 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 and also from Rio, Professor Jurandir and Professor Vargas. I, here I have a list of names in some many places and many places in the world, people that help us in this project. I'd like to thank you uh, all of you.